Greetings world, it is I, Andrew the Bearded Lady, from the Hairy Game Lords, and for Zatu Games, I will be reviewing for you Deep Blue. Ooh. So, before you find out my thoughts, let's go over to the table and see a very brief how to play. Okay, so it's difficult to fit all of the board in this shot as it is such a large board, but here is the setup for Deep Blue, as you can see. Great stuff. So there we have the main board there and we have several. These are the dive sites. Now, to before you can move on to the red dives, you need to be able to complete all of the yellow dives, which are the beginning and easy basic dives to do. Down here on the left of the board is the location where we will discover the sunken city and in these red dive sites somewhere within there are the uh, pieces that will fit into here now the game is finished as soon as all four of the sunken dive sites have had their dives completed uh, and the place and then the tiles are placed on here once the dives are completed in everywhere else they are just then discarded so as you can see over here, we have the uh, recruitment area and each uh, person card has a different recruitment value. So $1, $2, $3. And then if you didn't like any of those and you wanted to replace all of them, you would play $4. These would be discarded and four new ones would come into play. So how do you buy these cards? Well... Everybody starts off with a player board. When I say board, it's more a thick cardboard, but hey, that's all it needs to be. And as you can see on this player board, they're all different colours, and they all have their own ship name. This is the Walrus, and uh, their own kind of different ship uh, picture. So on your go, you can take one of these four actions. You can either recruit a crew member from the recruitment area, as pointed out earlier. You can move. You can dive either on the yellow or the red, but of course you need to do the yellow first. Or you can rest. Now, when you use your cards, it's a little bit like a deck builder. When you use your cards, your cards go into the bunk. And then on your rest turn, and what I like about this is on your rest turn, you don't get all of your cards back. You pick up the whatever pack of cards there is here, you shuffle them, and then you deal yourself just three cards from that deck, uh, and they go into your hand. So that's your player board there. Everybody starts out with the same four cards, obviously with their own colour and name and ship on it. But so each card we have uh, on here, this is a propeller. So somebody can move one space with this or they could use this card as two buying power. This one you can move two spaces. This one here allows you, gives you a dive bonus. So if you were to play this card down whilst diving, for every two silver that come out and that are found, you get two gold or two victory points. Also, it's a one uh, dollar or one currency. And then here you have similar, it's again, it's a one buying power, but this time a dive help for every gold that comes out, you get two victory points. Now, when using these cards for uh, moving or for buying, you can use as many as you like. Um, so if you wanted to move three spaces, you could place these two down into your bunk and move the three spaces. If you wanted to purchase something for 
one or two, maybe even three, you could use a combination of the cards. And again, if you wanted to use them for four to reset the, the marketplace, you could do so. So those are the cards that everyone starts off with, and you will get through those cards relatively quickly. Uh, and so the rest has to come in. Let's just have a look at some of these cards from here. So uh, here we have Shani, and he provides you with additional oxygen. Very, very useful in the dive. This person here, Frank, he is worth two buying power. And then for every six gems that come out and doesn't matter what color they are you will get four victory points now these ones here are really helpful because when you're on a dive and there are plenty of gems that will come out if you are able to push your luck that far then you could cash in quite a lot with frank and some of his other mates uh, we have here Florence. Florence will let, allow you to move three locations. Very, very useful. Let me just have a little peruse of some others here. So, uh, again, we have uh, uh, Raquel. She, When a red gem comes out, you will get four victory points. Here we have Selma. When a purple gem comes out, you'll get five. Uh, and then we've got different... Uh, ones here. Now this is cool. I really like uh, Obed here. Obed, if you the green comes out, and there are only two of these cards, if the green comes out, you will get eight. Now what also I like about this, uh, you realise that on all of the cards, there are all these kind of tentacles, and you think, yeah, obviously that's to do with the deep blue, but here there's a kind of a double meaning. As you can see, Obed has got a kind of Cthulhu t totem, uh, and there is one of the Cthulhu signs, the um, uh, the older one, Lovecraftian sign things, whatever you call it. Uh, so I, I kind of like that a little bit of attention to detail there. Cool, cool stuff. Now, as you may have noticed on some of these cards here, uh, there is uh, this little logo or this little uh, thing here. So you would add to this Saka Magique, which has already some gems in it. But when these cards come out into the marketplace, you would add an additional of that color, additional gem of those colors. So for instance, Obed adds a green, Selma adds a purple, um, whoever it was who I had did the pink, the red rather, here we go. Raquel adds a red. So the they would come from, uh, let me just see, over there there is a supply of gems. Uh, and as those cards come out in this area here, those gems are added to the bag, the dive bag. So let's have a look at what the dive does. Oh yes, uh, just another thing to add is, uh, as you can see, the different people there, another oxygen person. Here we go. Elias, he provides um, a weapon or a harpoon ting to defeat any nasty creatures that are coming to gobble you up. Also very, very useful in a dive. So onto the dive. Oh yeah, another thing to, to note is the Captain Log cards, which the quality of these cards are fantastic, really nice and thick. There are several of these. You shuffle them and then draw one, and then this adds a little bit, a little a, a, an additional thing to the game as well. So if not forced to resurface, the dive leader scores two points for every three gems pulled from the bag at the end of the game. Very, very nice. Uh, there are, so there's a, a variety of different additional things. So all cards played for VP grant four points more than what is listed on them. Excellent. It is recommended that you play uh, uh, the first one, which is, I think, called Sunken City, uh, as it's probably easier. 
But if you, I would say, if you are already into board games, then I would just jump in with whichever one you pull. So we would go. So in terms of movement, let's just very look quick, look quickly at movement. So say like I moved um, here. So say like I, I use this card here, the Walrus with two. I would move uh, one, two. I'd flip over this tile. Oh, and as it as it has it, it's uh, the Hermit Crab tile, which means nothing. So let's pretend it was this one here. And I would flip over this, uh, and then I could get, because I have travelled there, I get to place my uh, boat onto one of these locations. So here, this will give me extra protection against the sea creatures. Here, this means for every silver that I find on the dive... I get an additional three coins. And here for every red that I find on the dive, every red gem gets me ten coins, which this is very helpful when a lot of those red crew cards have come out. So I would place uh, my uh, marker down on so like that, and that would be the end of my game, my go. Maybe somebody else has... Uh, maybe Maybe what's happened is somebody else has gone here... And say, for instance, it's my go again, and it's I want to dive. What takes place before the dive happens is that anybody who is in the area, so adjacent by one or just one area away, they can move in to their to the dive for free. The only downside is is that they can't anchor into one of these bonus areas. They just are involved in the dive. So whoever initiates the dive is the dive leader. They will be given two victory points at the end of the dive and they grab hold of this board here and the bag. So what happens is, as you can see, different gems that are pulled out are sat onto this board and uh, different points are awarded. From the basic dive, if you pulled out seven silvers, you would get one victory point. Three gold would give you two. One red would give you four. The greens and the pinks would give you nothing. So you really need those cards, those crew members, to help you gain much needed points from these two. And as you can see also, uh, for instance, if you had your card here, uh, at hand on a dive, you could place this down and uh, you would also be guaranteed two victory points for every gold. You wouldn't have to wait for three gold to come out. The same also with the silver. Uh, every two silver will get you two victory points. Now, if in the course of the dive, seven silver comes out or any of these numbers come out, you will also gain the victory points there if you continue with the dive. If you have to resurface, you will miss out on all of these. So let's just have a quick look at what happens in the dive. When we played this uh, last night, this is where we added some atmospheric music from YouTube. When I say music, it wasn't really music. We added in some diving sounds, which helped bring in the, the mood and intensity. So... You would draw uh, from the bag, a blind drawing from the bag, and here we have a silver. So the silver will go down like this. And then what can take place is the, the, the dive leader then gets to place a card in front of them. Uh, so this one would be placed, and therefore um, whatever happens in the dive, if we are forced to resurface, um, the cards that are placed down protect... Um, the benefit or the points scored from certain gems. So if you have to resurface, you miss out on um, on the points from these things here and also from uh, your anchor points. But any card played down gives you the benefit, gives you the points scored and protects you from having uh, to lose stuff when resurfacing. So... Uh, that then, after the captain or after the lead diver has played that, it goes round and everybody else plays a card if they want to. 
The next thing is bought out. It's a silver. And then a green. Maybe a, another silver. Ah, and then if we were to pull out a black, the black would go here. Now, the black is just a warning shot to say there could be another black that's pulled. And if you do not have protection in a crew member for that, then you will be forced to resurface. There are also blues, and blues are oxygen. Again, this is a warning shot. Next time a blue gem is pulled, if you do not have uh, Shani uh, from here to play down, then you will be forced to resurface. Anybody else taking place in the dive, will that will happen to them as well. And it's up to the dive leader on when they resurface. And when they resurface, everybody else is, re is forced to resurface also. And so you will continue to push your luck, pulling gems from the bag and placing them on the dive set board. And then when you... Uh, when you resurface, you add up all the points, points that may have been uh, scored from the dive things here, from the, the areas where you have dropped anchor, and of course from your cards that you have played down also. All of those are tallied up, and then the right amount of coins are then added into your amazing diving chest to be kept secret from everybody else but then added up at the end of the game that is effectively how you play deep blue so what are my thoughts well days of wonder have of course done it again they have created a beautiful looking game. The artwork and design of the whole game from the box art all the way through. The board is wonderful and it is big. It's certainly a table filler, if not killer. Then there's the individual player boards that, uh, well, are more kind of a thick card than board, but hey, that doesn't matter. Um, the character cards, those crew members that you can recruit are just beautiful and just carry the theme of the deep water diving all the way through. You've got uh, those diving chests, those plastic diving chests that you secretly keep or that you keep all your uh, victory points or treasure in that you have found. And um, then even just the little kind of plastic miniature boats as well that you have just all wonderful and then actually the the dive sites themselves a good thick sturdy punch board with that fantastic artwork on who's this game for well this game would be brilliant with a as a with a family game the box says it is for ages eight plus and yeah i can see this working in a family setting uh it's great as a gateway game it's not too complex. It's relatively easy to get hold of uh, and understand. It's easy to teach. The rule book is really, really helpful. Not too much text. Lots of great pictures in there. And uh, the playtime says about 45 minutes. Our playtime last night uh, took a little bit longer, um, but it was a f fun, fun game. There's lots to do. Lots of places to go off and dive. And basically the game finishes when four locations, four certain locations of the sunken city is found. And actually you can, be, you can play a little bit more strategic than maybe we did last night. If you are doing well in terms of the treasure that you have got from the dives that you have done, then hey, why not go off and try and locate all four of those tiles so that you can usher in the end of the game thus leaving you the victor. Last night when us Harry Game Lords played, we didn't play it like that. In fact, we went to every dive site and located everything we could. The push your look element is really good as well. So there's this kind of looking, there's this exploring 
element to the game. And then there's the push your look. Some, some fantastic stuff there. So when you're diving and you're pulling out certain um, gems, they refer to certain things. Some refer, refer to points, uh, victory points, and others refer to the oxygen being limited, all those sea creatures out to attack you, thus making you resurface without those much treasured and needed gems for the win. Whether it's a game group or a family board games night or even a gateway game, this is a brilliant game. There is also a lot of replayability in it because each of those uh, dive sites are kind of shuffled each time and laid out in different order. There's also a variety of different cards uh, that will come up. After we played last night already we're thinking, right, what else do we want to do? Maybe instead of building up a huge crew of really helpful people, maybe we'll just go off straight away and uh, go some, do some diving before others are out of the bay and out of the harbour and able to join in with the dive. Lots of fun to be had with this game. Beautiful artwork, great theming, really easy to learn and to teach. Get involved and obviously... Zatu are going to be knocking it out of the park with a brilliant price. So head over to our website and take the plunge into the deep blue today.